fishing, one of the world's oldest hunting methods, dating as far back to the Paleolithic period. Records identify this goes back 40,000 years. But where are we now? In the majestic waters of the British Virgin Islands, the practice is a simple one. But has that time of abundance and simplicity come to an end? Fishes um, consume a lot in the BBI. If you look at it, you got tuna imported, right? Sardine imported. Um, even the blue runners are imported. The kingfish is imported. The salmon is imported. All kinds of fish are imported. What is needed in the BVI is for us to be able to uh, capture the type of catch we want. You can't do it with the same traditional fishing that you are accustomed to. Our fisheries, right, is what we call our artist artisanal fishery which is you have to do different type of fishing to sustain your livelihood you just can't retire to one type of fishing and plus we have the, the season when they can't close the conch season close the whip season the lobsters the, the groupers the hinds etc so you have to change up your methodology of the different techniques. My grandmother and I grew up right in this yard. I grew up with my grandmother from the age of five months. So that's my mother, grandmother, daddy, everybody. And I noticed that she wasn't eating um, chicken. We had a yard of fowls, but she wasn't eating chicken. And one day she said, you know, I asked her and she said, from time she was getting children, the midwife didn't do the chicken brought properly, and it made her sick. So to look at a fowl and eat it now, she can't get it. So the chickens were always mine. But because fries and fish were so plentiful around the shoreline, on my way from school, I would see the pelicans diving, man. I said, something happening. I would get my little piece of line and hook. Sometimes you just go and you pick up a pelican vomit, fry out of the pelican vomit put it on the line. As you do so, look at the yellow tail, arm long. And sometimes I only stay and catch one, you know, because I'm, I'm bringing it back home live for my grandmother to be able to have dinner. And I kept doing this for many months. It, it became something of a necessity or a hobby. And I found it pleasurable. And Real relaxing for me because I was a teacher from a young age of 14 years. And um, so my grandmother had fish and I had chicken and I had fish too. So it, 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 it struck a balance. The BBI have so many islands among us and we have so many reefs. And so we don't need to go to no place to fish. How we do every day, we just throw the island and we go fishing to it. But this is you know we have a lot of uninhabited island. You know? And we just go out there and fish and we have everything that we want. We have fish, we have lobster, we have you name it, we have everything. You don't need to go no place to fish from DBA. No place at all. I've been fishing for 25 years of my life, about 28 years of my life. When I came to the BVI, my stepfather, a uh, Rastaman, local Rastaman, um, he that's all he's done all his life, so I kind of really picked it up from my stepfather. Um, always like to go out on boats, go on the rock stones, train out different lines, you know what I mean? That's really what got me started into it, catching little small snappers, snapping, catching the hard nose, the groupers, the grunts off of the rock stones, and I always wanted to improve myself in that. So, you know, it really pushed me to want to excel my fishing career. When you have a boat, like, you know, I'm blessed to have right now that I worked so hard to get, 
you know, it, it, it made me excel and want to go further and further, more and more different types of fishing, you know. But pelagic fishing is my real love to know that I could go out there and produce fish, catching hundreds of pounds of fish and come back in and help different people, you know, helping the community, feeding the community, dealing with the five-star restaurants. My whole curriculum is just action-packed. Fishing is just a different portal in life, you know. I mean, I see it basically as an opportunity almost, you know. There's so much fish to catch. One person cannot do it, you know what I mean? It, it, it takes a whole team, you know, and there's, there's no I in team. There's one thing you gotta remember, you need a team to make everything function in life. If you don't have a right team, things won't flow correctly, you know, so it's, it, it, that's how it is. My biggest catch so far to record, I would say, is about 1,000, 1,085 pounds of mahi-mahi. Um, that was all done by the grace of a fad. A fad is something what we locals and all the people around the Caribbean use. It's called a fishing attracting device. Basically, it's like a mooring buoy for a sailboat in thousands of feet of water. They think this thing is floating, where now I have it stationary in one spot. So we went to the fad now, one of these fads that one of my best fellow fellow fishermen went and put down, you know, uh, went out there, we threw a bunch, a bunch of live bait and the whole bottom of the ocean had just turned green, blue, green, mahi mahi can done. It was me, my best friend Duran, his wife, and one of my other fellow colleagues, Kerishan, one of my best friends, Kerishan as well. And like literally for four to five hours, nonstop, flicking the fish into the boat, flicking the fish into the boat. We filled all the coolers. We started throwing all the fish into the engine room. We had fish going into the, um, the side boxes. We like, had no more space for fish. We had to leave it. Nowadays, you got, you got your outboard. And sometimes they use the outboard to, 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 to run the fish instead of men rowing, you see? Um, nowadays, you could go much further out and fish because of the outboard power. But um, the ease and the time, you could get there in, in quicker time and get back to the market in reasonable time as compared with long ago, much better. And the local market consumes quite a lot of fish. If you notice carrot bay, carrot bay, Many, many boats come in to Caribbean fish. And people passing from all over the island collect the fish, the lobster, the everything. Caribbean is like, it, it, it like the center. I believe Caribbean and East End, Caribbean and East End is, could be called the, 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 the heart of the, the real fishermen. Over time, as things start to develop, our country start to develop, um, some of my friends, including young women, young girls like we growing up, they have a, they went off to a different field, but I always stick to the culture of my father, building boats and being adventurous in the sea, like my father did. 
claim on Davies. <laughs> yeah. A way of life and a new way forward. Evolving with the modern era. A culture lives on.